no matter how long I've been in this sport, I think I'm the smartest guy in the room and know all sorts of things about the sport. One thing that I fall for every time, I think it's one of the reasons I get to enjoy this sport as long as I have as a fan, I fall for the marketing every time. Now, I thought Woodley was going to win the fight, but I did see we are going to have a big back-and-forth battle here, and it's going to be confusing and probably go five rounds, and maybe the judges would have to get involved. Until all of a sudden it dawns on me. We, we just saw this story. It was just called Engano versus Stipe. It was just an untested guy against untested styles walking in to the most complete fighter in the division that's got a 12-pound gold belt around his waist to prove it. And that is what we saw. It was as dominant as you could possibly get, and much like you saw with Engano versus Stipe. There will never be a call, there will never be a need, and there will never be a rematch between Till and Woodley. Well, well, how do we fix the relationship between you and John Jones? See, he recently came out and said that, you know, you're, 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 you're a liar. Like, it's scary how much you lie. And, you know, you guys used to be friends, used to be teammates, college teammates. How do we fix this? Is this fixable or, or is this never going to get fixed between you two? How's John doing these days, Aaron? I'd really like to know that. Is, was he was he giving this interview from jail? Um, OK, so that is that is that a no? You're not you're not interested in fixing it. Did you lie about anything you said about John Jones? No, nope, I've never lied about one thing I've said about John Jones. Everything I've said has been to the fullest extent of the truth. You know, you can't believe anything that guy says. He's delusional. Look at the stuff he says. Oh, I'm God. Oh, this and that. Like, he shoots himself in the foot. Like, everything he says, like, you know, like, he's saying he's all this religious person, but he's hitting pregnant ladies, and he has all these drugs in the car. It makes me for the foothills, like, little coward that he is, so... You know, the guy is completely delusional. I think all the, the, the drugs have rotted his brain, Ariel. So, you know, he needs to go checked up, get checked up with the doctor and make sure that his chemical levels are bounced out, right? You, you had mentioned uh, the welterweights not having much for you, and you had also mentioned possibly, you know, in the past talking about going up and fighting Bisping. Is that something that still interests you in the future, um, possibly moving up. It's, it, we're in a, it seems to be a new time. I'm sorry? Sorry, I'm at the carpool grab my kids. But, um, no, it's okay. So I, I would definitely, especially, especially when you got the, the, the current middleweight guys that are fighting for a title, are both oversized welterweights. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yep. Already beat Kelvin. Robert Whitaker, you know, the tough stud. He had two good fights with Yoel Romero. But he lost a Wonder Boy, a guy, a, a guy that I fought a couple of times. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, um, I was, you know, right now I'm just, I love the game with mixed martial arts. I love where it's at. I love what I see when I watch, you know, when I watch it. Zabib and freaking, um, you know, Al Jermaine pulling out these crazy ass submissions. Tatiana Suarez completely, you know, I heard, I heard Carla was throwing up in a hospital from concussion just from the amount of abuse she took. So I'm just excited mm-hmm. to be at the top of the uh, food chain during this moment. And whoever they put in front of me, man, I just want to keep. I want to do better and better and better and be more dominant and dominant every single time. And um, that's all I'm focused on. I mean, I'll get. I'll eventually get that fight everybody wanted me to get. You know what I mean? That big fight. But I, I just can't call for it myself. The fans will do it for me, and when they do it, then I'll step up and I'll I'll, I'll rise to the occasion. Well, well, I'll say this right now. I definitely sign off on you versus the winner of Gastelum and Whitaker, Because as you said, you've beaten Gastelum already. Whitaker was a welterweight, so it totally makes sense. And so uh, when, when people talk about his wrestling, they talk more about his takedown defense and they, they, they talk about how great it is or whatever. I believe you have the best takedown defense in the UFC, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know that anybody's ever taken you down. Uh, I guess looking at you as an expert, what do you make of his takedown defense? Nah, his takedown on the fence is what it is. He doesn't really have takedown the fence. He tries to run and bail and do athletic stuff and try to roll across his head, try to create a scramble, but it's not like he's out here stuffing takedowns. And besides, whenever I grip him up, good luck with trying to move and scramble or whatever, you know. So, um, like I said, I don't think his take- takedown defense is good. Like, if you go to a wrestling match and get taken down, like, over and over again, technical fall, they'll stop the match because he just got taken down so much. But, um, like, it's funny because he talks a lot, but he has a lot of holes in his game. Like, I don't really have any holes in my game. I just get greedy sometimes. Like, I go out there and I'm, like, super aggressive, which is stupid. But, I mean, it is what it is. You hear a lot of middleweights 
in the UFC complaining about, oh, I don't make enough money. I'm not complaining about that because I get crazy sometimes, and the UFC likes the craziness. Their fans want to see the craziness. So I look back, and I'm like, man, okay, all right, you need to tone it down a bit because you get all off balance just trying to knock people out. You know, I have great technique. You know, it's just sometimes they get a little, a little greedy, a little, a little gamble, just gamble a little too much out there instead of just sticking to it. So I like this because I have a guy that I can't get greedy against, just like Anderson Silva, okay? That fight didn't go my way. I won the fight, but I got jerked on the decision. But I wasn't super aggressive because I had a guy who I couldn't be super aggressive with. Leo Machida, I couldn't be super aggressive with. You write a home, you write a home, I couldn't be super aggressive with. So those guys are all did fine with. Okay, this guy is a maybe a tad bit quicker Anderson, but less MMA awareness, uh, less no jujitsu. Anderson Silva, you take him down on the ground, this guy is nasty on the ground. You have to worry about a lot of stuff coming. You know how to slow down your punches. You know how to throw elbows from the bottom. Um, he just, he's just a super veteran. This guy has nothing on, on his back. You know what I mean? He's, he's basic. I see him throw up a triangle. It didn't look half bad, but I'm not really worried about <laughs> catching me in a triangle. I'll pick him up and spike him on his head. So, um, yeah, just definitely looking forward to the fight. GSP has never seemingly wanted that fight. You know, that has never been a fight. It's been a fight that's been on the table now, you know, for the better part of 24 months because it's a fight that Tyron would love. Um, so what do you think is next for Tyron Woodley? I would imagine you don't think it's GSP. I don't think it's GSP. To go back to who the greatest welterweight of all time is, you know, uh, listen, I still think it's George St. Pierre. I, I, I truly do. I, I just think that when you look at – Tyron Woodley and who he's faced and the fact that this sport is evolving and getting better all the time. George yeah. St. Pierre has never faced a grappler like a Damian Maya, and he's never faced uh, a striker, striker like, like, a, like Stephen yeah. Wonderboy Thompson. So, um, again, um, I, I think over time, as Tyron continues to win, I, I think he will take that number one spot. Um, however, um, I, I think this is a fight that could happen, however. When you look at Tyron Woodley and, and his impressive wins and who he's beaten, I think if he's able to get another couple of wins um, and do it like he did against Darren Till, if he's able to destroy a Colby Covington, for example, there's only really one guy left, and that's Kamaru Usman. If again he goes by, he gets through him or cuts through him early, I think that uh, it's a better chance of happening. I, I truly do. I think for George St. Pierre, he wants a huge fight, and he wants to fight someone who, you know people are very impressed with uh, a fight that people would consider a super fight a fight that yeah. is going to help his legacy and i think as of right now he probably still feels like he's the best welterweight but when he starts to question that because george st pierre is about challenges just like tyron woodley is about challenges yeah when you start to question am i am i the best at the end of the day if i beat tyron woodley he puts a stamp on that um when that starts to kind of creep into his mind i think we'll see george st pierre take that fight so maybe if he's still around another couple years or another year But speaking of heavyweights, man, I've obviously got to ask about Cain Velasquez. We talked about him a bit here. Everybody wants to know if he's coming back. We've seen him at the WWE Performance Institute training there. We've seen him at some WWE events. Does he come back to fighting, in your opinion, or will he make the transition over to professional wrestling? Um, no, he's looking to fight. It's just a matter of his manager uh, getting the deal done for him. He's been looking to fight. He's been healthy the whole year. You know, he, he's been all he's been healthy and, and he wants to fight. So we'll see what the management and, and, uh, and organizations uh, do to, to get that to happen. But uh, he, he's not uh, he's not retired by any means. He's, he's never said he's retired. He's just you know he's just waiting for a deal. Is he in the that gym makes often? sense for them? What's that? Is he in the gym often? He was in the gym quite a bit helping Daniel. Uh, now he comes in every so often. Uh, he has a lot of things to do. He loves his family. He, he spends a lot of time with his son and, and uh, his wife, you know. So he's always been a family man. Every time people talk to me, they don't fully understand what a great family man this guy is and what his family means to him. They mean everything to him. So, you know, if he doesn't have a fight, he'll come in, stay sharp, you know, this and that. But if there's no fight coming around, he'll spend that time, quality time with his family. And that's, that's the way he will always be. 